what's going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome back i did promise you guys an extra two episodes today but it's going to be on early access so for all of you guys that watch on early access you have this for today the deal will come out five days later on the youtube channel but i'm enjoying this little practice match that they have going on right now um and you know our boy um hanamichi he's you know what i'm saying he's He's, he, he's remembering what he learned, you know, um, and somebody, you know, I saw the comments, you know, on the past video that I uploaded three, three episodes, you know, straight to the channel, didn't even go to early access. And I saw the comments and I was like, uh, people are still talking about this. <laughs> People are still talking about this as if it makes as as if it makes sense. People just don't like other people talking crap about what they believe to be a masterpiece. It's just it's crazy to me sometimes when I see comments like that because it's just like, bruh, I'm trying to look at this from a logical perspective and you're just in your feelings. Let's just be honest. You're just in your feelings because even though I believe naruto to be my favorite i even took it off of my top five because i'm like you know i don't like to hear people talk crap about uh, crap about naruto i don't like it because there's so much more good than the actual bad but i don't have no problem talking about the bad it's just that some people just go to the extreme and make it seem like oh this you know this makes naruto not a top five anime and i believe it to be a top five overall i think everybody should have naruto in their top five anime of all time you know what i'm saying and i'm not saying th that it should be i'm just saying that's what i believe you know what i'm saying i'm not going to argue with you you know if you don't believe it should be in your top five but that's just to me because i have a little bit uh, like a, a much more better connection like some people still have you know what i'm saying dragon ball as a series overall in their top five or the greatest you know what i'm saying anime of all times which is absolutely ridiculous to me because, <laughs> because dragon ball went completely downhill after dragon ball z if I, you could make the argument for dragon ball and dragon ball z right you could you know you could make the argument for dragon ball to dragon ball z to be you know two of the best arcs in anime ever you know what i'm saying but but <laughs> you know what i'm saying a lot of stuff came after that you know that just made it completely go downhill so has a complete series no you know what i'm saying so there were there's a lot more people there's a lot of things that people could talk about and i think the biggest thing when it comes on to naruto that people talks about that makes it not in their top five or whatever i i think most people will say too many fillers that's what people always say oh, i said it. okay then read the manga and i tell people to read the freaking manga of naruto if you read the manga of Naruto, all these fillers will leave such a bad taste in your mouth. And also, with the manga, there's a lot more that is explained in the manga that is not explained in the anime. And that's not to say manga is always better than anime. It's just what it is and how things plays out. Most of the time, the anime takes a lot of liberties that does not happen in the manga. And that's why, you know what I'm saying? Like, for me... The reason why I haven't jumped back into like Hunter Hunter manga is because it's not it's not done and it's a lot to go. It's kind of like you jumping off the anime of One Piece to go read the manga right now. Like you have I don't even know. I think there's like 900 chapters of that of of freaking I think it's like 900 and something now for the manga for One Piece. So starting to read One Piece is a job. <laughs> It's a job, okay? But I just want you guys to know, man, that I'm not ragging on the anime because at some point I have to be I have to be a critic of what I'm watching. You have to see my reaction to it. I have to have an opinion about what I'm watching. And and the thing about it is that no matter what you tell me about the whole layup thing, it's still not going to make sense to me of why he why he, control your strength 
You gotta be kidding me. That's the argument you're going to bring? <laughs> to counter what I said? He couldn't control his strength? Guys, come on, man. Come on, bro. Come on, man. We're not talking about an idiot here. We're not talking about an idiot. We're not talking about an idiot. Even if you're going to learn to control your strength in any scenario whatsoever when it comes on to sports, you're going to learn to control your strength. It's not that hard. Stop making it seem like controlling your strength is something that's going to take you forever. It's going to take you days to, to adjust? Are you kidding me? Come on, man. <laughs> Releasing a basketball? Come on, man. Stop making excuses. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it is what it is. It didn't turn me off from watching the series. That's all I can say. Okay? So, let's jump into this, these reactions, and I will see you guys for the review. All right, so that was episode 18 and 19 of Slam Dunk. We finished up the practice match, and I have to say they did an incredible job of portraying or simulating what, you know, basketball is all about. They did a pretty good job of that. They did not slide us in, in any way possible. You know what I'm saying? And I know I talk about the whole layup situation a lot of times, but that's just because people keep bringing it up in the comment section, um, you know, because I because I'm saying stuff about it. But I'm this this is probably going to be the last video I talk about that layup stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure it's not going to come up again. So, um, so when the, when the, when throughout this entire match. As I, as I stated earlier before, they did a very good job of portraying certain important skills that you have to have that is very important to basketball. They covered the fundamentals of what it takes to win a game. You know what I'm saying? The boxing out, the rebounding, those things are very essential. Rebounding, if you win on the rebound side, you have a better chance of winning a game. You know what I'm saying? If, you know what I'm saying? Than if you don't get rebounds. You have a better chance it's not to say that if you win the rebound battle say for instance you could still get more rebounds than the other team and still lose a game you get what i'm saying still lose because you're missing <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's just you know what i'm saying it doesn't determine but it gives you a pretty good chance of controlling the game giving your time giving your team more chances to score um and limiting the other team scoring so if you're giving up rebounds, you have a bigger chance of losing the game. If you are getting a lot of rebounds, you get a better chance of winning the game. And I'm glad they take the time to point out certain things, explaining how fouls work, how add ones work, and all of those all of those fundamental things. They're taking the time, you know, whether it's 10, 20 seconds to have this little dude come in and explain the rules of basketball. I think it's a great way of doing it of not having the coach or the assistant coach which is the girl that's what i'm calling her or is she the manager i don't know that's what i'm that that's what i'm calling so they you know instead of having her explain everything they just have this little dude come on screen take a little break there you know and to explain things to the average viewer who has never been introduced to the world of basketball who doesn't know anything about basketball so they could understand you know a little bit about how things work so there are things that i'm going to see that i already know because i watch i watch basketball all the time you know what i'm saying um you know i, I you know it's it, it's it's one of my favorite sports to watch i mean it's literally probably the only sports i watch now to be honest because you know um i don't really watch football i keep up with it somewhat when it comes on to football somewhat but i don't i don't really watch football like i'm not a guy that you know watch you know sunday football watch it every sunday monday or thursday i'm i'm just i just don't watch football like that unless you know the team that i like is winning 
which my team sucks right now. So I'm, I'm not really paying attention to that. Um, you know, I don't really watch baseball either. Even though I have a favorite team in baseball. I used to watch baseball a lot back in like, I want to say probably, ooh, I want to say probably 15 years ago. I used to watch basketball. I used to watch baseball a, a lot, right? Um, but I don't really watch it that much anymore because... It, it, my team is winning now but baseball just it doesn't just it doesn't carry the same kind of entertainment that basketball provides you know what i'm saying so it's like yeah i'll watch baseball when it's playoff time i'll watch baseball like i'll keep track to see like if my team is winning do they have a good record are we going to make the playoffs but i won't sit down and watch the games you get what i'm saying i know the players that are playing for my team i i know those things you know what I'm saying? But other than that, I know nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like if you ask me, hey, what the, what other teams are doing good right now? I probably wouldn't be able to tell you. And that's baseball. In basketball, you practically can ask me anything about basketball and I can tell you. Who's the best players in the game right now? I could probably name them just off the top of my head. Pretty much anybody. Probably most people who probably you don't even watch basketball, you could tell some of the top players. You know what I'm saying? Um, I could tell you the top players. I could tell you um, the second best player on every team. I could tell. I could tell you those things about basketball because I watch basketball all the time. I watch the games. I watch different teams play. I have my favorite team. I, you know what I'm saying? Like those are things. But it's different when it comes down to basketball. That's why I'm super interested in watching slam dunk because it's it's my favorite sport to watch now and. They, to see how they handle it and also i played basketball when i was in high school so it's it is what it is you get what i'm saying so there's a lot of things they're going to explain that i already know you know what i'm saying rules that have not changed there's a lot of rules that have changed since i'm um, you know since um if 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 i remember correctly because i watch college basketball a lot of college basketball but i don't really pay attention to the to to the rules that much <laughs> you know what i'm saying because the rules are so different in college basketball like it's not a vast difference but when it comes on to the quarters um and and you know what i'm saying i don't even th i think i think college basketball has two halves if, if i'm not, it doesn't have quarters it has two halves i think it's like two 20 minute halves or something like that i think i'm not much and i'm not even sure because it's been so long because there was no march madness or anything like that this year so I'm, I'm a little bit off my game when it comes on to remembering stuff about college basketball right now um, because I watch it, but I don't really, really watch it like how I watch the NBA. So it's like I know the schools that are good, that are always around during Ma March Madness. I know those schools. I don't really know the players that well. So, it's, it, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like the NBA is just it for me. But I do like watching college basketball. Like I watch games sometimes but i don't like you know as i said before i don't like wake up to go watch college basketball you know what i'm saying but the nba yes i have to watch nba basketball it's too good it's too good <laughs> you know what i mean so i'm happy that they're doing that in this man of explaining the rules of basketball they're doing a very good job of that um so losing is a part of of sports you can't get away from it there's no team that has went undefeated forever since its inception no team can claim they've never lost a game it's a part of it you got to understand that going into sport yes as a athlete as a competitor you want to win every time but when it comes on to practice games a lot of weight is not really put on practice that much i understand that hanamichi being a rookie not understanding that about sports yet you know they truly need to, to to let him know as the coach let him know this is only the beginning okay and it's a very good start you lost by one point to a team that was going all out from the very start you were down by how many i think they were down by by 20 something or 30 at one point i think they were down by a lot okay let's just say that i don't think they went up by 30 but I think they did went up by 20 at one point or in the, in the high teens. I think when it, I think it started out at like 19 to two or something like that 
if I remember correctly, but it was very bad, okay? So for them to lose this game only by one point, you know what I'm saying? It's amazing. It's an amazing accomplishment for a practice game. If this was a, um, a match that would help them to advance in a tournament or something, I can understand, you know, the dull feeling and, uh, you know, that feeling of loss, that gut wrenching sadness that you feel, you know, after a loss, I could understand that, you know what I'm saying? But for a practice match, it's not that big a deal. You get back to the drawing board, you realize that you have something good, that you have a good, strong team right now to go up against, you know, a top four school. Of course, they're going to be better when they play them again, if they play them again. You know, of course, they're going to be better. Our team is going to be better. Shohoku is definitely one of those schools to look out for because they got a wild card in Hanamichi. You know what I'm saying? I think he's going to be a beast once he gets the fundamentals down. Once He's going to be a beast. You know what I'm saying? And I, you can see the potential in him. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, and I, and I like to compare this anime, like the, the, the you know, the, the feeling and the, the, the competitiveness and, you know, how the, the narrative is being written. I like to compare it to Haikyuu because Haikyuu has a very similar situation a very similar narrative but at the same time you know but at the same time it doesn't go as far as to make it seem like um a, a character like Hinata can't pick up on anything like he may come into matches nervous and stuff like that but the fundamentals of volleyball you get what I'm saying? He knows that he sucks at certain things and he he needs to work on it. And some of the stuff is very you know what I'm saying? Like they harp on it, you know, and I, I have critic I've criticized high for doing the very same thing. There are certain things that are very easy in volleyball. You know what I'm saying? But at least he was able to do it out of just trying to do it. You get what I'm saying? But they made Hanamichi this dude that picks up on things so easily from the start. You t you t teach him something he got to dump pad but you know things happen i don't you know what i'm saying i i just don't understand why they went that length to do that but they did but it's okay you know what i mean i just want them to move on now to portraying this dude of learning how to play basketball and becoming a genius at it because some things do come very easy to people to some people that they can't even explain to the to this to a very uh, a, a similar per like a person who not really getting it like you know somebody who's like hey i can't do that as well as you can you teach me how it's so easy to you and that person sometimes can't even explain to you and you know you could say that you know great players don't really make great coaches you know what i'm saying in in, cer in certain aspects you're gonna get that you know great players are just not gonna be able to teach it just as much as they could do it they just can't and that's why a lot of times you don't see the greatest of players become coaches in professional sports it's because of that they don't at least they they might try but they're not successful at it and it's very few that you will see that are that are successful at it when you talk about people like steve kerr which is you know what i'm saying i mean a lot of people might make it seem like you know steve kerr inherited the Warriors from you know Mark Jackson building up that team and then he just came in and just started winning championships you still got to give Steve Kerr a lot of credit you get what I'm saying you still got to give him a lot of credit for doing what he did I mean three championships in in, in in what three championships in four years like that's amazing that's that's amazing you know what I'm saying so you you gotta give him props for doing what he did with what he had you can't just you know a lot of people say mark jackson you know he built up the warriors and then they fired him brought in steve kerr and steve kerr won all those championships we don't know what would have happened if mark jackson stayed maybe the team would have stayed you know maybe the the team would not have popped off as much we don't know what would have happened so we can't judge it based on that 
but I do understand some sentiments behind the whole Mark Jackson building up the team and then Steve Kerr coming in, but still got to give Steve Kerr some credit. He did coach the team to the championships that they had. You know what I'm saying? He did, he did do that. So you can't discredit him for that. You got to give credit where credit is due, you know. So, um, you know, great, great, you know, players becoming, you know, great coaches is not, you know what I mean? It doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen all the time. So, um, so in explaining things, I think that, Shohoku, I think they're gonna do very well. I can see the potential these them having a big three between these three pairs, these two first years, and we got Akagi also. So I think they're gonna be formidable against any team they come up against. It look like they're gonna be a really good team going forward. And that is all I have to say right now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, it's your boy Terry by Reacts. I don't know, so don't ask. Because I know you're thinking, when is the next episode coming? I don't know. But a schedule will be out on Monday. So make sure you check out that. Anyways, thank you guys so much. Appreciate y'all. Leave a like on the video. Leave a comment. And I will catch you guys later. Peace.